Traveling by boat is my new favorite way to get places. I have been talking a lot about the Emerald Coast, which runs along the Gulf of Mexico in the Florida Panhandle. And here is another reason why I love it here. The access to the intra-coastal waterway also known as the ICW, and I've been traveling along it a lot lately. First, I'm going to give you the formal definition of the intracoastal waterway. The intracoastal waterway, also known as the ICW, is a 3,000 mile inland waterway along the Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico coasts of the United States, running from Massachusetts southward along the Atlantic seaboard and around the southern tip of Florida, then following the Gulf Coast to Brownsville, Texas. Some sections of the waterway consist of natural inlets, saltwater rivers, bays, and sounds, while others are artificial canals. It provides a navigable route along its length without many of the hazards of travel on the open sea. Just to be a little bit more specific, on this map, I'm gonna show you exactly where it runs because it does break up in places, but for the most part, this is where you're gonna get the intercoastal waterway. Okay, first of all, it starts in Brownsville, Texas and goes to Carabelle, Florida, and that runs west to east. Then you hop across the Gulf from Carabelle, Florida, and it starts up again in Tarpon Springs, Florida, which runs south to Fort Myers, Florida. Then you have to kind of hop out of the intracoastal waterway and it drops you down to the Keys. And then from the Keys of Florida, it runs the length of the Eastern seaboard all the way up to Portsmouth, Virginia. Okay, quick history lesson. In the early 1800s, there was some interest in the intracoastal waterway, also known as the ICW. There was a guy named Albert Gallatin who created some plans for some canals that would link Massachusetts all the way to Texas. He was told no, the plans got shot down. And then in the mid to late 1800s, of course, there was a lot of interest and growth in the railways. So that pushed plans back for the intercoastal waterway even more. But then in the early 1900s, interest did pick up for the ICW in large part by the, uh, with the invention of the internal combustion engine, which is powered by diesel fuel. They didn't have to use the coal and all that anymore. And with World Wars one and two, there was huge need to ship cargo in large sums. And then also we were hiding in the intracoastal waterway from submarines that were trying to get us. So it was, you know, a safer place to be on the water. Today, the ICW is still used to ship or transport fuel, food, building products, any manufactured goods, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It is extensively used by recreational boaters. We are using it for travel, just to be out on and play on. It is absolutely beautiful. And like I said earlier in the video, it is right now my number one way that I like to travel. My husband and I had been talking about buying a cruiser or cruising kind of boat for, I would say, a, like seriously about two years now. And we attempted to buy one last year and we finally did it at the beginning of this year. I think we wrapped up the sale in February and we have been having so much fun. I just kind of want to go over some of the trips that we've done along the intracoastal waterway and just kind of show you how much fun and how beautiful it is and how accessible so many areas can be by way of boat. So our first trip on the boat was coming home from buying the boat. We bought it in South Florida. It was living or staying in Punta Gorda, Florida with a wonderful couple who is now retired and they did a lot of traveling on their boat. So we had to get the boat back here and we didn't want to hire someone to drive it home. We decided to make an adventure out of it and we brought it home ourselves. We took our great friend Larry McNally with us to help us get it across the Gulf because we had to take that route. But what we did is we picked up the boat in Punta Gorda, Florida, which is really cool down there. And we came up through the intracoastal waterway on the, I guess it would be the west side of Florida. And it was awesome. We stayed our first night in Bradenton, Florida. Along the way from Punta Gorda, Florida to Bradenton, Florida was amazing. There's all these different cities and towns. There's bridges and 
dolphins and people and boating and it was just so beautiful. They had mangroves, they were everywhere and it was so cool. I really loved seeing that side of Florida. We did have to call a couple bridges and have them lift. There was a lift and then there was also a swing bridge. So that was cool and interesting as well. We stayed the night, like I said, in Bradenton, Florida, which was really cool. And then we boated up to Clearwater the next day. Great marina, great town, so much fun. So we left Clearwater, Florida just before sunrise. It was absolutely gorgeous to cross the Gulf of Mexico. From what I understand, it was an incredibly easy crossing. I think we had maybe waves or seas up to two feet, but not really that much. It was mainly like flat and seas up to one feet. So I had a, a very easy crossing for my first time. We came in through the Dog Island Pass, which is right there by Apalachicola. We headed over to Apalachicola and anchored up at their marina, one of their marinas there for the evening. Apalachicola is one of our favorite towns along the Emerald Coast. So we, we had a good meal and got a good night's sleep and we got up the next day. It was very foggy out, but we ended up making it all the way home that next day. I think it took us about eight hours to get from Apalachicola to Destin, Florida in that one trip. We went the length of the Intracoastal Waterway from Apalachicola to Destin. It was stunning. It was gorgeous. I was blown away. I had never been on that part of the ICW and and um, just to kind of give you a little tip, from Destin to either Port St. Joe or Apalachicola, you can do that easily in a day. Okay, the next trip that we did along the Intracoastal Waterway was to Fort McRae, which is part of Pensacola. We went during spring break, our son's spring break. We went over for a couple nights. It took us about four hours to get there. And again, we traveled the length of the Intracoastal Waterway from Destin further west. It's absolutely beautiful over there. They have Fort Sumter on one side and Fort McRae on the other side, which is where we stayed. We had a great time. It was a quick trip. And, you know, we just cruised home when we were ready to go and at a slow pace. And I think it took us about six hours to get home, but we were fine going slow and just enjoying the beautifulness and peacefulness of it all. So a little tip on traveling west from Destin. I would say you could get to Perdido Key in about four to six hours, depending on your travel speed. And then you could probably get over to Fairhope in Alabama. It would probably take you the day. I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna say that's a probably about an eight hour boat ride heading in that direction. Then this last trip that we did was one of our summer trips that we had planned. I spent a week on the boat, I got a lot of sun, but we decided to take our son and a friend over to Port St. Joe because the snorkeling over there is so amazing. They just have sea life that we don't have here in this area. And it, we planned it out to be a week. We left in that direction at a fairly slow pace. I think we stopped, we made it more than half of the way the first day. We went through through West Bay, St. Andrews Bay, and East Bay, and stopped in this river that was just past that bay system. It is so beautiful. Now again, we're traveling the Intracoastal Waterway. It's beautiful. While some of it's man-made canals, you do go through natural bodies of water, which was a huge part for us on that first day. But where we anchored up the first night was absolutely amazing. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. We got up the next morning. It was pretty early. I watched the sunrise. Then we headed out, making our way to Port St. Joe. <laughs> we thought, man, we're gonna get there early and we're gonna find our spot and we're gonna start having some fun. We ended up having to stop at the marina for gas. We burned entirely too much gas the first day and their marina at Port St. Joe is amazing. I am actually going to do a video on Port St. Joe so I'll talk about that more then but we stopped at the marina. It was amazing. We finally went out into the bay and found our spot. The kids had fun. They went snorkeling. They went swimming.
and then we actually traveled to a different spot to anchor up for the evening. We made our meal. I forgot to say, our first night we had steaks and salads. This next night we had some hamburgers. It was delicious. I had corn on the cob. It's just a really great, fun time. The kids are not on video games. They're out in nature and playing and having a great time with adventures. We spent one more day snorkeling and having fun and then we boated home. But again, we used the intro coastal waterway to get there and to get home in both directions. And it was really just a great week long trip. I would do it again in a heartbeat tomorrow. One of the things that my husband and I are most interested in is doing the Great Loop, which the inter intra-coastal waterway helps you fulfill that process, trip. Anyways, I loved making this video. I loved all the trips and time that I've spent on the intra-coastal waterway. I plan to do it so much more. I think Fairhope will be our next stop, but I really hope you enjoy this video. I hope you get out on your boat and get into the Intracoastal Waterway and we will see you next Thursday for more videos about real estate or Dustin, Florida. Bye.